everybody, it's me, Zach, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing Amberlynn's mom's addiction and charges that Amberlynn's mom faced while going through that addiction, which do include conversations about domestic violence and also harm towards animals. So if any of that sounds like too much for you right now in this moment and you want to save this video for later, uh, feel free to come back later or perhaps just skip it altogether if that is what you need to do. Uh, but I just wanted to do my best to give you a heads up that those conversations are coming. So hi, hello everybody. Uh, like I just mentioned in that little content warning, uh, we are going to be discussing all of those things because Amberlynn posted a video today uh, called The Truth About My Mom, uh, dot, 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 trigger warning, addiction, prison, etc. bar vlog. And I knew based on the title that if a good portion of this video was about what the title said, that I probably wouldn't do my standard general reaction, the one where I like watch it all for the first time with you, which by the way, somebody did recently um, leave a comment about that. And I do from time to time get comments that suggest that I don't watch things for the first time um, with y'all that I like pre-watch them and things like that. There's literally no way I'm ever gonna be able to prove that to you, but I do wanna say like I'm doing today, I usually let you all know if I've watched something for the first time with you or not. Um, or if I watched it before I started filming. And I would say that today's video, for all intents and purposes, is not necessarily a reaction, more just general commentary about the video that Amberlynn posted today, and also a, a reaction channel because she talks about the reaction channel. And so we're gonna talk about that reaction channel's live stream and the context of this whole video. I also, maybe before we really jump into it, and I'll make this quick, but I also just wanna say that like, what's most important to me in all of this, just for the record, and, and also why I'm like hesitant to really make a whole entire video about Amberlynn's video, is just that I, really value people who who have been through addiction, who are currently experiencing addiction. I value the importance of taking care of those folks in our communities and our societies. And I don't like when people's addiction stories are used as tea. And I don't really like when people use other people's addiction stories for content either. I think it's okay for us at this point to talk about it in the context of Amberlynn because she's made a whole video about it. Other people have been making content about it. She's talked about actually her mom's addiction in multiple videos. This is not the first time she's ever brought it up, but I, I usually don't have a lot to say about it. And I want to say the thing about me not thinking that, that people's sobriety or addiction is tea is not a, a new concept. I actually said this last summer in regards to Amberlynn talking about Destiny's brother, and we'll get to that later in my little outline that I have here on my computer. Um, so just know that I've been fairly consistent about that as a thought for a long time. So Amberlynn did post this video. The first, I would say, three to four minutes of it are actually her vlogging. She she goes to like a restaurant with her mom, to Walmart, to some other little like retail store. Stuff that I would normally be happy to react to. Like I did have some thoughts about it, but I don't feel like in the grand scheme of things, like any of it's that important in the context of the rest of her video. And one thing that she's gonna remind you of multiple times throughout the, the video is that she didn't want to make this video. She didn't want to talk about this, but she felt like she had to talk about it okay guys so i personally hate that i even have to talk about this but i'm going to because not only is it important to me but it's also important to my mom but i'm not gonna sit here and justify the things that she's done neither me or my mom want to do that this is not something that i will be speaking about it's not something that i'm gonna come back on here clarify this clarify that because i think it's bullshit that i even have to do this to begin with and she goes on to discuss specifically that there is a reaction channel who um allegedly begs for side characters allegedly begs to learn more about her mom on her channel but then goes on to at length talk about her mom's criminal past behaviors, etc. And so I did go watch that person's stream, but before we get into it, I think the thing that is 
is challenging about also, well, one of the many things that's challenging about this video is that, you know, like, I don't understand why she's watching these reaction channels to begin with. And somebody from my Twitch community did suggest that, like, perhaps maybe, like, she didn't actually watch the video, that, like, somebody just sent her a DM about it. Um, she does mention in the video that both she and her mom have gotten many messages about the various um, charges that were uh, read out loud on this live stream. So I'm, I don't know if she just like fully didn't watch it. She presents it as if she did. Based on some of the things that she talks about, I'm not entirely sure that she did watch the whole thing. Or at the very least, she's misrepresenting a little bit, I think, where that streamer was coming from. She also doesn't name the reaction channel, like I said, but folks from my Twitch community suggested that it was Jordy from Oh Lordy, It's Jordy. I went to his YouTube channel. I did pull up a live stream that was about that video where her mom shows up for all of two seconds while they're playing bingo. And based on the way Amber Lynn talks about this reaction channel and what I watched on Jordy's stream, I would say it's pretty safe to say that she's talking about, oh Lordy, it's Jordy. I'll leave his live stream link down below as well as the timestamp where he starts. I think he starts around like the 28 minute mark and he does go on to talk about it for what I think, what I estimate, what I remember <laughs> being like 20-ish minutes. During the 20 minutes, Jordy spends most of his time just like reading from a list of charges that Mama Len has. And it's mostly matter of a fact for most of it. Like most of it, he's just reading it off. Like I didn't even really honestly feel like he was giving too much opinion on it. There, there definitely was some that he gave opinions on, but a lot of it was just him reading off the charges that he found online. Anytime he wasn't talking about that, I would say it was mostly filled with him just like chatting back and forth with his chat. It was a live stream, so people were, you know, interacting with him as people do in live streams. I would say maybe towards the end he he got very specific about about his feelings about Mama Lynn. Uh, it might be helpful to know that specifically the charges, and I'm, I'm generalizing here, I'm not going to read you the dates and all the charges and whoever, but generally the charges were, were four things from what I recall from Jordy's stream. One is her, her use of drugs, her use of substances. Another was vandalizing something or another. Another was a domestic violence charge towards Amberlynn's grandma. And the final one, allegedly, is about her harming or killing a service animal. Now I say harming or killing because from what I've seen online now, it looks like the charge in general could be as extreme as killing or as, I mean, not to minimalize hurting an animal, right? But like as little as just harming it in some kind of way. I also say allegedly because in Amber Lynn's video, she does make the claim that her mom did not do that and that the person that they found and have pulled up is a, a different woman, a woman that has the same name as her mom, but is not her mom. There is a rumor going around that my mom went to prison for five years for killing a service animal. I am telling you right now that never happened you have the wrong person. My mom has never been to prison for five years, period. The longest she was ever in prison was for two years. And that was for drug related charges, which most of them were. So towards the end of him talking about all of her charges, he does make some pretty uh, strong critiques of her, says that she is a demon, that she's evil. Uh, and I think probably a lot of people feel very strongly about animals getting hurt, animals getting abused, and also like, uh, the stuff with Amberlynn's grandma is also clearly very serious as well. One other thing that he does say that I think is important to emphasize is there's a part where he talks about how we don't know the full story. And I saw someone in the chat saying, uh, you know, maybe the dog was protecting that person. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to say, I'm not, this is not what happened. I'm not saying that this is what happened, but, you know, we don't have all the stories here, you know. Very rarely in Girl World are we given all of the information, so it's kind of like puzzle piecing it together. In that particular quote, he was specifically talking about whatever happened with the service animal. We don't know how the animal was harmed. We don't know the, the context of why she did that. Who knows? He was just saying in general that we don't know the full story. And I think like that's important even for like the drug charges, for any of the charges, right? Like we don't know the full story outside of like she was found guilty 
according to the records, and at some point served some kind of time in prison for her behavior. I think that's mostly what I want to say from, from Jordy's stream. Like I said, I'll leave it linked so you can go watch it in its entirety and along with a timestamp so you know where he starts talking about Mama Lynn. So we can go back to Amber Lynn's video about this whole situation. So she, she comes on and she's like, talking about how she feels like she's forced to make this video and she has to address the reaction channel that was talking about it and she shouldn't have to do that and that it's really unfair. I'm paraphrasing a lot. And like I said, Amber Lynn swears up and down that her mom would never kill a service animal and would never would never do something like that to an animal because she loves animals so much. You know, I think Amber Lynn is in such a weird place for posting this. <laughs> Honestly, truly, I, I do think it's sort of like a lose-lose for her altogether, because even in Jordy's stream, there was a lot of conversation about like how she was gonna address this, which also, Jordy says this a lot, and I do just wanna reiterate, like none of this is news, right? Like a lot of the charges we're talking about are things from like, I think the earliest went back to like 2002 or something. Um, the service animal related one, I think, was 2010. And so, and, and don't quote me on those those dates and timelines because I'm doing it mostly from my head. Um, I didn't have that in my notes for whatever reason. Uh, but all of that to say is like, people who have been around Amber Lynn and her content on the internet have been aware that like Mama Lynn has a history. Mama Lynn has a record. Um, I think specifically it came back up again because Mama Lynn showed up for those like, 10 seconds in that video at the bingo hall. And so now people are talking about it again. The reason I think it's lose-lose for Amberlynn is if she didn't address it, people in that chat already were like, uh, well, she's just letting silence speak for itself. I think even Jordy said that. He was like, I guess she'd rather just let silence answer for her. And so it, I, I could see how she maybe felt pressured to say something because of that, but also like, I don't know how this helps anything. Like, I don't know how her video helps anything. And I think by bringing it up, there's so many more people that are gonna go investigate these things about her mom. And I I just, I don't know, if it if it were me, I think I, well, it's not me, but, but if it was me, I think I would have veered on the side of caution of just like, hey, I've said what I've said about my mom's history thus far on my channel, and I don't have anything more to say about it. Because I'm so serious when I say that this has brought so much more attention to it. Uh, like I said, I've been aware that Mama Lynn's history isn't great, but I've never like personally sought out her, her like records and things like that. And I didn't even have to try to find her records. Like I went on Twitter and all the people I follow, well, I can't say all the people I follow, but a lot of the people I follow in Girl World on Twitter were talking about it. I've seen screenshots of her records popping up on my timeline without even trying to find it. Like any level of privacy Mama Lynn might have still had left, I think is out the window now. And it's just fascinating to me that she chose to address this stuff about her mom when she went out of her way to not acknowledge or address things related to wifey when they were, were brought up. I mean, there were like, there were all kinds of th legal things about wifey too that people <laughs> like discussed on the internet that Amberlynn actively ignored and didn't address. And we went, what, two years of wifey living with Amberlynn? We never saw wifey's face not once on her channel. And if you think about the way she's also approaching things with this Valentine girly, she literally just got done saying in an Instagram story the other day that she wasn't gonna move things too quickly because people just wanna like come online and try to pick apart things about Valentine's life and dox her on the internet. So it's just like interesting to me that she's like not taking that same level of care with her mom in this situation. And that's not to say that like, I want Amberlynn to sweep it under the rug. Uh, you know, I, I think I have a little bit more of a nuanced thought about all of that, I guess like, I guess in this case, in this scenario, I just would be clear that like, I don't, I don't think that, you know, anybody has to like, like Mama Lynn, like Amber Lynn, forgive Mama Lynn for any of her past mistakes or behaviors. 
Um, I'm not saying you have to do any of that, but outside of the context of Amberlynn and her mom, I just personally know a lot of people who have dealt with addiction in some kind of way. I can't obviously speak for them or their stories, which is maybe why also Amberlynn shouldn't be out here speaking <laughs> her mom's story, but that's besides the point, at least the point I'm trying to make. But knowing the folks that I know who have dealt with addiction and what they've been through, I, I would have to believe that a lot of them would not want to be held to the standards of their past, like to be held to all of the mistakes they made in their past, even to this day. I see a lot of value in, in helping people with addictions, uh, you know, grow, heal, move forward and allowing them the opportunity to move on in life and live a life of sobriety. And I don't know, intuitively, like not an expert on addiction, but intuitively it doesn't feel like a, a great path to people being able to move on to a life of sobriety if they're constantly being held to their behaviors from, from years and years ago. With that being said, like I think a lot of people in addiction programs and things like that, you know, do a lot of things to make amends and do a lot of things to to, you know, constantly reevaluate their life and make sure that they're leading a good life. And so um, I hope that's also what Mama Lynn is doing. In the context of Amber Lynn and her mom, I think it's good that there is nothing, at least that we know of, that has happened in Mama Lynn's life in recent history that looks like she's repeating the behaviors of her past. And again, I don't think anybody has to forgive her or, or treat her any kind of way, but I do uh, kind of sort of, after listening to Jordy's stream and listening to Amber Lynn talk about it, I'm kind of like sort of unsure on what people would even want Amber Lynn's mom to do at this point, you know, like what what's left for her to do. Uh, she served the time that she was sentenced to for the crimes that she was committed for, and she's seemingly sober to this day. And so I, I think that's a, a large part that I struggle with because I think people make bad choices, which Amberlynn's mom clearly made a lot of. And I also, you know, think that she shouldn't be subjected to all this scrutiny all these years later. You know, with that being said, I also think that Amberlynn has put herself in this position and Amber Lynn hasn't been thoughtful when it's come to other people's addictions, other people's sobriety. And I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but it was literally just last summer that Amber Lynn was in a phone call that Destiny was streaming live to her page, to her, her YouTube channel. And Amber Lynn fully brought up Destiny's brother's addiction on that live stream. Like, how shitty is that? Like, do you want, like, I know tea on him. Like, I know tea on your whole fucking family times 12, but I'm not that person. You have tea on my brother? Yeah, he was a coke addict. Oh my god. And honestly, I think it's really fucked up that she's bringing Destiny's brother into the situation, bringing his substance abuse into the situation, especially on the heels of her getting upset about Destiny bringing up her mom being in prison when her mom is allegedly not connected to YouTube and things like that, when like Amber Lynn's mom is way more connected to Amber Lynn's YouTube channel than Destiny's brother is connected to anything about this Destiny situation. So just to be clear, I thought it was kind of fucked up then too for, for Amber Lynn to bring that up and try to use it as tea against Destiny. And in a lot of ways it feels like Amber Lynn only cares about people using addiction as tea or monetizing addiction as tea when it impacts her. And I don't think I make this clear enough in the video, so I'm gonna add some thoughts while editing, but like it really does just feel like this was an opportunity for Amber Lynn to a little bit play victim and, and make it a story of like reaction channels being bad, this, that, the other. Not that there's not room for critique on any reaction channel, but just saying like, I'm not entirely convinced that this was not just brought up because Amber Lynn saw it as an opportunity to be the victim, to make it out like she was harmed and hurt by the situation, which like she may well have been, but I really think she's only bringing it up now because 
it serves a purpose to her narrative. Just like earlier in the year when she only brought up having a relationship because somebody brought up that she was single and jealous of Destiny and Beck. So that's that's really what this feels like here. And that's not to mean that we shouldn't care about the sobriety and or substance abuse issues facing Amberlynn's mom or Destiny's brother. I think probably both of those people would have appreciated their respective folks in the, in the ball game, not bringing up their addiction, not bringing up their past, etc. And I'd also like to think that maybe Amber Lynn has just changed as a person since then. But when I was watching back the video I did about that live stream, I was reminded that at the time, Amber Lynn was upset with Destiny because Destiny brought up Amber Lynn's mom going to prison and things like that in videos. And so she understood even then how upsetting it was for people to bring up stuff like that about a family member, and yet she still did it to Destiny. I think there were some other issues that Amber Lynn had with this video too, mostly in the ways that I think she did sort of misrepresent Jordy's stream and what Jordy was doing in his stream. Like, at the very end of her video, she she says, like, oh, like, Jordy was, oh, well, she doesn't say Jordy's name. <laughs> Let me restart. She said, oh, he was just, like, having a laugh or having, a, yeah, I think having a laugh. I don't know. I'll play the clip. And more than anything, I just hate that this happened and that this reaction channel got a laugh out of it. I think it's really sad. And I th think initially I was like, well, he wasn't literally laughing. And I don't know if that's what she meant or not. Or if she was just trying to say like, oh, like this was all fun for him. And he's monetizing it. Boo him. But either way, like my take on it was not that Jordy was having fun covering any of that stuff. Any of those details of Mama Lynn's past. Um, and so I do feel like, you know, it's a classic case of, like, Amberlynn misrepresenting what really happened when you go back and watch it. I mean, we can have, like, a conversation on whether or not you think Jordy should have been listing all of those things or, like, if it's even relevant or necessary or if it's helpful for anybody. You know, I think there's probably arguments for, for all of the involved, but... Amberlynn fully like made it sound like he was just hee hee ha haing over there and that is not the vibe of what that live stream was and you could go watch it for yourself like I said I'll leave it linked. So anyways as always Amberlynn m makes questionable choices in terms of how she approaches anything on her channel. Um, I don't know why she did a lot of this. I honestly think it would have been better off if she just didn't address it at all. She claims she doesn't watch reaction channels and yet she gives reaction channels the time of day all the time. All of these things probably would have been better to unpack with a therapist. Maybe, I don't know, a therapist that specializes and people who have BPD. Just the thought. I don't know. <laughs> she was just on the Twitter or not the Twitter, the Instagram a few weeks ago saying that she realized she really needs to go to therapy. So I think this is something that would have benefited from being able to talk out with a therapist, talk about the pros and cons of addressing it publicly or not. And here we are. I don't know. I, I'm also just like, if you really wanted to do this, like, I think letting, letting Mama Lynn share those things is also important, but it's all a mess to me. And I just, what if, if I could ask anything for folks, it's just to like, if you have people in your life who have been impacted by addiction, uh, I just, I just hope you, one, are taking care of yourself. That can be super difficult to handle. And two, that you, um, you know, treat them with love and respect and, do your best to, like, help them through it, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I don't have all the answers for those things either. I think, like, mostly the thing that I, I've taken from this is that, like, I don't know that anybody's addiction or, or prior history with addiction is, like, the tea that anybody thinks it is, you know? Like, Amberlynn's mom clearly went through some shit and made some horrible choices and, like, certainly is going to have to live with those horrible choices for the rest of her life. Like, it's it sucks. And you don't have to like her for it. You don't have to, to love her for it. You don't have to do anything with her. Honestly, truly, she was in that video for 10 seconds, you know? I'm gonna stop rambling. I think I've said what I wanted to say. I think I have a little bit of hesitation that, like, I, 
I feel like the things that I'm saying make so much sense to me. Like, I think all the way around, there's lots of questions to be asked, but I just like, <laughs> I just know that people don't like Amber Lynn and so find it hard to agree with any of her points. And I, I think she made some fair points in her video, but that's also why I just like encourage people to think about it outside of the context of Amber Lynn and think about it in the context of maybe somebody you know who's been impacted by addiction. Uh, it's certainly not my favorite thing to talk about. In fact, I don't know that I'll want to talk about it too much more after this video. But also one of the only reasons I'm making this video is because I anticipate that this is going to be a part of the story for at least a few videos until something else comes up because I'm sure this won't be the last video that Amberlynn addresses it, you know? All right, let me know what your thoughts are down below. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell button, leave me a comment, hit like, click share, follow me on all my social media. Take care of yourselves. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!